Welcome everybody to this episode of Learning the Tropes, the Daisy Sessions. Um, this is the penultimate episode, episode nine, written by Jude Lena uh, Nyken, uh, directed by Nzinga Stewart. Feels like the first time. Feels and like I'm the Aaron. first time. I'm Taylor. <laughs> Um, how's it going, Taylor? We just chatted yesterday. We've been talking about how excited we are. Once we have finally finished this recording, we will both be off to watch the last episode. Which the last I... episode, the finale of the show. Yeah. So okay. sad. <laughs> but I think we've been going back and forth about how nervous we are about the finale. And yeah. I do think after watching this episode, I'm less nervous. Oh, really? Okay, are you the opposite? Um I think I think it's going to be I don't know. I maybe I'm I think I see what you mean by being less nervous, but I'm also I'm also real nervous, but I I think <laughs> I've I've come to accept it and I'm like, okay, yeah. that's what they're doing. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm real interested to see what happens with one particular character though. I know. Mr. Eddie. I love Eddie. Uh what is going to I'm we'll we'll get there but like Okay. Woo! Um okay, so we start Daisy wakes up. Gold Dust Woman is playing, which is such a perfect song and almost such a good song for the scene that I was mostly listening to the song and not, and not paying the attention. Scene. Um I was just like thinking like fucking Stevie, really knows how to sing yeah um also daisy is is an amalgamation i think of a lot of different people but like obviously people constantly draw the comparison to her and stevie Nicks. yeah um nikki is there trying to be caring trying to pretend like he's been there the whole time just rest darling yeah he's gross you, i hate his face you called it you said mm -hmm. he would come back and be there and then I said, which would make me hate this even more, because then it's like she kicks him out because he left and not because she realized it on her own. I still didn't like it. I, I understood what they did, but I still didn't yeah. like it. Also, why? I knew he that never you were going to be upset. Well, she so then she immediately runs to Billy yeah. to ask what happened. And Billy tells her the truth. Yep. You know. That he was there. He didn't think that he would, she would want him there when she woke up. And then she opens the door and Nikki's in the hallway and she just like, pack your bags and leave. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like the sentiment of the scene was the same as the book. And obviously it was not the same as the book, but I feel like she, I like the idea of her waking up, no, like ha knowing that he, Nikki had left like somehow in her body she remember she knows that he didn't help her and he left her in the shower mm -hmm. and just going to Billy specifically for confirmation of that fact I thought was really good and interesting like she believes Billy and whatever Billy tells her and knows that Billy's not just going to say whatever just because he doesn't like Nikki you know Right. And then as soon as she, as soon as like her fears are confirmed by Billy of like, no, he was just going to leave you there to die. She immediately kicks Nikki out. And it's much more like theatrical and in your face and in the book. But also it's like it's a TV show. It's visual versus. Internal. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I think as the scene started to play out, I was more OK with it. But then it was mm -hmm. still just, you know, she says you left me in the shower like all you did was leave me in the shower. So she gets there. I just still, you're right. It needed to be external and cinematic. And I, so it was fine. She did. She kicks him out. You know, he doesn't just leave and she's pining for him to come back. He does come back and then she kicks him out. So she does have some kind of agency. But I still just like, I think it was just residual effect from the last episode. It still kind of graded on me. But it did get there. So yeah. like, you're right. And also, I love that the three band members graham warren and eddie are standing behind her oh which my gosh very first of all very sexy would just putting it out would sleep with any member of this band fully Full but stop. i think that like 
you know, Nikki goes after to like push Daisy or grab her or something. And they immediately step in. And then Warren says a line that I love. And like Warren is comedy. And he goes, you heard the lady. When would he ever call Daisy the lady? But it's such like the line that you say it's in that a, moment. Exactly. That exactly I just what you say. lived for it. Yeah. I rewatched <laughs> the part where they all step in front of her and like go to get him. All three of them. I watched yeah. it five times I loved it so much it's just like it was so good because you just want that you know like for as much as a you don't want anybody fighting over you but you want somebody to defend you and you want your friends to have your back and like for a a man to just step in there and be like no 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 like yeah so hot about it it was so hot. It was, it was so, so hot. hot. All of their mean faces, Eddie's mean face in particular was was funny to me, but also really sweet and endearing. Like they were like horrified for her and like ready to throw down. And yeah. I loved it. And then afterward, Eddie is trying to like touch it to like put his hand on her shoulder to like console her. And she like can't stand his touch, which I think makes sense. Um, and then I love that the men kind of realize like, okay, she needs to be alone, but then Karen comes and hugs her. And I thought that was such a beautiful moment. Yeah. I love that. She lets Karen hug her. Yeah. And then she breaks down before that. She's trying to like stay tough and mm-hmm. Karen is the best. Great. Yeah. Um, then they're on the bus. Daisy's trying her version of sobriety. Um, she tries to call Simone. Simone doesn't pick up. A fan calls her a bitch, which is so the female experience. We love mm-hmm. you. And then, oh, you don't give me exactly what I want. Fuck you. You're awful. Yep. You know? Classic. And then Rod yeah. immediately turning it around after he does, though, and just like going straight for it. And then someone grabbing Daisy and taking her away. Like, I loved the Rod turning him like straight around. I thought it was also great. Oh, yeah. I just love seeing Lots like, of Rod. Thank God. Yeah, lots of rods, so good. But I love seeing like these men band around this woman when they know mm-hmm. that they need to step in. Well, and especially in that hotel scene, in that first scene, Daisy standing with the band and the band standing with her. It feels like a, a moment of mm-hmm. like total acceptance. Um. Then Billy's the back of his bus watching a little TV. Didn't that seem like the coziest place in the world? It's like, oh, if I had a little bus and I could just snuggle up on a banquette, wouldn't that solve all my problems? I was very surprised that there was a banquette, though, because Daisy's has a bed. And this is also where, I don't know, the whole, like, when are they sleeping in hotels? When are they sleeping on the bus? I guess this is just... Tour life? I think it just depends. Yeah. But, Yeah. I don't know. I think the buses are just outfitted differently. Like Daisy yeah, yeah, has yeah. a bed in the back. Billy maybe. Well, because also they talk about like they infer that Graham stays with Billy too. Because at right. one point in the last episode, he's like, do you mind if I don't stay with you? So I think also it's like you can't just be like two brothers sharing a full bed. <laughs> you know? Obviously. Um, but Billy and Daisy have a real moment where they kind of talk about like, this is the culmination of all their dreams and it's not what they wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, but she hates yeah. that he was the one who saved her. Yeah. It felt heartbreaking. Yeah. And it Daisy allowing herself to be vulnerable again after she had been burned, but mm-hmm. it does them getting closer now feels different than them before. Like they feel like they've both grown as people and had experiences and are now coming together as like in a clearer head. And not that they're coming to, not necessarily romantically, but just like now when they're meeting and when they're relating to each other, it feels really earned in a way that I think we talked about before, like the first time it feeling unearned you know yeah there were so many times though during this episode where I just thought the same thing as last episode where if they hadn't have kissed a few episodes ago this would have been so good so good there were so many moments where I was like oh I just wish you hadn't have kissed this would have been amazing but Maybe in our minds, let's just say they never kissed. They never kissed. We'll just pretend they never kissed. And this is very 
romantic intention. We're just going to pretend it never happened in our world. Yeah, fair. But you are right um, with this. Like, it does feel different. And I, I liked how this feels. It felt like they were just, yeah, getting to know each other as people. Billy offers rehab. And I think he knows she's not going to take it. But I think he feels like he should. Yeah. Right. You have to um, ask. And I like Billy calling Camilla to tell her about everything that happened with Daisy and stuff. And it just does feel like this tour is different. Like Billy's communicating. Here's everything that's happening around us right now. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Daisy goes over her rules about when she'll do drugs. Only a bump before a show. <laughs> uh, so disappointed. Quailude at the end of the day. A little bring benzene. her down. Yep. <laughs> It's the best I could do under the circumstances, which is also true. Like if an addict like how Daisy was, couldn't stop cold turkey and continue to function mm. like this is the best she can do. And she doesn't want to give up kind of where she's at. Right. And she still has a job to do. And in mm -hmm. a weird way, this helps her do her job. Right. It's like if she can function like this and feels not quite as out of control mm. um then they're on stage billy tries to get daisy to rest so i guess this solves the issue we had last episode where we're like why was billy off stage like i guess they do take turns of not yeah. being on stage mm -hmm. um and she turns around and she tells the whole audience that she almost died and but she's like but we're here tonight let's stay around a little longer what it's, did you think of that speech? It started off so I didn't like it. I was just, I thought, wow, this is what? This is kind of out of the blue and so random. And then she pulls it back down and then it, it feels very uh, stage uh, performance-y where she needed to express herself. She needed to say what she really thought. But then she pulled it back to this is how you react. Like, this is how you interact with the crowd. You know, mm -hmm. like, this is how you talk to a large group of people <laughs> uh, yeah. who just want to have a good time. <laughs> like, I don't know. It was, it was, it, I bumped against it a little bit. And then I was like, okay, like, I guess. Did you like it? I did like it. Because I think that there's a level of being herself that she can only really be on stage. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a this episode is about her peeling those layers back and getting on stage, like not 100 percent sober, but more sober than she ever that she's been probably in a long time. And. The amount of shame that she felt around the overdose, I think it was interesting that she just kind of put it out there to them in a way um that felt very i don't know true to her character like i feel like she would have an easier time telling fifty thousand people something than one person something yes i agree with that which also makes it very strange though that before she was so worried about looking weak and like with the rolling stone article and having this embarrassment and shame about her attitude or her personality and her actions yeah i don't know i guess i can't marry the two totally because i i like what you're saying like she does daisy would totally be somebody who would not be able to tell one person how she feels unless it's billy but she can tell a stadium full of people her thoughts mm -hmm. so then why would she feel so much shame at being seen in a different way mm -hmm. i mean maybe they're not exclusive but it just seemed a little well i think that that was always the weird thing about the rolling stone article yeah. but it's also it could be growth it could be her kind of like letting go because i do think the closer that you come to sobriety part of it is about not holding on to the shame anymore or yeah. releasing the shame and so it could be that I just thought it was, like, interesting. Yeah. And she immediately feels lighter after that. 
And then she tells Rod, I am the fire. And Rod and Billy are thrilled because they're like, she's back. She's back. Um, Then the, the band in the future, they all talk about spring of 77 and how they felt like they were on the top of the world. Of course, Eddie's not happy because he has discovered punk rock and is very <laughs> nervous about it. He cannot love, be happy. I know, but I love these little insights, especially with, you know, the Eddie where he goes in the book where he becomes like a hotshot music producer and he like he can recognize everything. He knows that they're done. He realizes that this is the future. And then when the guy's like, oh, yeah, my little sister used to like re- listens to your records all the time. Just like a oh, knife stab to the gut. It just I thought it was great. Like Eddie's little moments. It, for being really aware and very like on top of the music scene i I really liked oh i mean it was great i did feel like the punk rocker looked old oh he looked 47 he looked so old and he looked like just like a dentist or like your (laughs) friend's dad and i'm like we couldn't have found like a a wiry 17 year old with like a safety pin through his nipple like come on like like, let's do this he looked like he had done all the drugs already and not yeah and like the thing about punk rock was also it was like kids doing it like they were so young yeah and it's so weird to be like it's like you know for this quick scene you couldn't just be like let's get a young guy yeah he looked leathery (laughs) yeah he looked like he'd seen some shit yeah probably his graduation ceremony from dental school <laughs> with, his, with Dr. Loving. Dr. Um, Loving. That we are at SNL. Okay. The band Wait. Is- oh, okay. No, but sorry. also like them at the, them at the punk rock scene and then them and then behind the scenes, uh, Graham and Karen, everybody's totally fine with it. Everyone's great with it. No one is like, this is a problem. This could be an issue. Yes. Like why the did they the- ever tell anybody like why they keep inflating these balloons and popping them and, and i'm like where's nothing? the dramatic tension now and yeah. then there's there's no fallout nobody cares everybody's happy about it like just let them have kept it a secret for three more weeks yeah and then there we're would done. have been nothing wrong with it there was just there was no fallout and it was infuriated because this would be like this would be a huge deal if two people that you knew started dating the, uh, and you're like, what's going to happen to me? Like people get selfish about it, you know, and no one was selfish about this. It just wasn't an issue. And they're like all over each other now and they're together. She, you know, he's giving her piggyback rides and it's just what? Yeah. Why aren't people talking about this? It was like, I, I was know. just, I didn't like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. It just kind of undercuts it where it's like, yeah, if they didn't know again, this would be more dramatic tension, but yeah, it's not. especially at the end. <sighs> um. Anyway, so they go to SNL. A mom says that her daughter wants to be just like Daisy when she grows up. And Daisy says, green, dream bigger little bird, which is sweet. Daisy, I like Daisy being good with kids. Yeah. Like, I think it's. It's a nice character part. It's because um, she basically still is a child. Yeah. As somebody who gets along very well with kids, it's because I am one. <laughs> yeah. Because you could relate pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, I, just, I do also just want to talk about my favorite dinosaur and unicorn. Yeah. We're just friends. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make it weird. <laughs> it's like once they age out, I'm like, oh, you're, you're a real person now. This is boring. Like, oh, I just want to play Legos. <laughs> I know. Um, Teddy's back, which is exciting. Teddy's um, back. You could see the sweat on his brow in behind the scenes at SNL, and you knew what yeah, was coming. He's mid heart attack. Yeah. Daisy's lost her pills. They perform. I have to say, the direction of the SNL performance I thought was brilliant brilliantly done it felt more real it felt the way that you would feel coming down for something Mm, mm -hmm. you know yeah and I don't know how they do that because I don't know anything about directing but something happened and it was a good choice they did (laughs) whatever that choice was (laughs) 
Um, Teddy looks like absolute dog shit, unfortunately. I know. He's like also sparkly. He's sweating. He was a mess. He was sweating. sweating. Yeah, the sweat. Um, We skip over to Simone real quick. She gets a record contract. And. But yeah. Is the guy her manager or her agent or somebody? Because the way he almost lets her sign something and then says, oh, wait, we should talk about this. I just was. If he's on her side, he shouldn't have let her get that close to signing it. But if he's on the record side, he should have let her sign it and then brought up the issue. Right. I mean, the issue, yeah, which they don't talk about is, like, she can't be an out lesbian. She can't be with Bernie? Or I don't, yeah, what exactly is it? I think I it's don't know the, she- the parts with Simone, I, I wanted, like, full scenes or... Nothing. Nothing. These little scenelets in the middle of their performance didn't work for me. No. And I think... I love Bernie as a character. Like, I think she's fantastic. And I love, like, she's talented in her own right, obviously. But there was, like, when they're in the car after Simone has, I guess, told Bernie, I don't know what, like, we can't be together publicly, which, again, I'm like, like, homosexuality, I think, was still in the DSM-5 as, like, a mental disorder. Like, it just it just keeps surprising me. Or I, I find it frustrating that Bernie is so modern in that she's like, no, we should just be out. It should be fine. It's like, Bernie would have also grown up in the 50s and 60s as a queer Black woman. She wouldn't be this ignorant to what it could cost somebody to be out. Because there was there were no protections in place. Like you could get right. fired from your job. I mean, like if you were a school teacher, never mind if you were like a pop singer, you know, there just mm-hmm. was no mechanism to be able to be out. And obviously there were gay, obviously there were gay male gay singers, but there was like Dusty Springfield who was like out but not out. Um, so it wasn't that it didn't exist, obviously, but Bernie just being like you should tell them all to go to hell. And it's like a a queer woman of color can't tell people to go to hell at the very beginning of her career. Like if she was like Diana Ross level at this stage, then right. sure. Right. Then maybe she has power. Right. But right now she doesn't have any power. You're asking her to give up her dream for, you know, it just seems it just it just stru- struck me as being an odd thing and made me think be more annoyed with Bernie because I'm like, uh I get what you're saying. You yeah, I think it would have helped if it was a full scene because I think you're right, Bernie would have been able to like there could have been a lot more nuance in these scenes and Bernie could have expressed that. I don't think she's that naive to think those things i think it was coming more from a place of like well i thought you loved me i thought you were willing to like you know mm-hmm. do uh, not like trade me but like put me above your career type of thing like people do that for love and i think if we had had a full scene the nuances and the complexities of that argument would have been able to be laid out and we would have gotten mm-hmm. bernie to have to be able to express those feelings but because it was just two seconds we didn't get to see that um because it is like i mean i don't know what they're gonna do at the end but if it if this is a story about choosing people you love over your art then give simone and bernie their full share of that also you know Mm -hmm. so i totally get what you're saying it just I don't know. I I guess I mean you liked the direction, but I think the direction of the the editing and the direction of the SNL kind of bummed me out. Like mm-hmm. the quick cutting didn't totally do it for me. I I wish that they had been full scenes. Uh either like give us the whole performance or not. Uh the like little snippets of Teddy 
I don't know. I just wanted like I wanted it to be more fleshed out. Yeah. All around. I think especially like it is a nuanced conversation and and it is an interesting conversation. And I just think I you know, an issue that we've had with this series is like there isn't a place in time. It isn't tethered to anything. And I think this is another way in which it's untethered because it's like two lesbians in 1977 would would have understood things and understood the limits of what was possible and you could still be upset about those limits you could still be angry like obviously like those are very valid feelings to have Mm -hmm. but it felt very like bernie was modern day and simone was just kind of scared where it's like they're looking at things bigger than just we we should be ourselves and live out loud, which like, obviously, yes, they should. Everybody should. That's not I'm not I don't want to like misconstrue that I'm like, oh, people should be happy to be in the closet. Like, uh, no. Right. But you do have to recognize history. You do have to recognize where they were in the 1970s and how difficult it would have been. But also how e- much easier it was to be closeted because. Well, to be closeted in a public way because of the the relationship with the press was so much different. So, like, mm-hmm. you could have a girlfriend on the road and they just wouldn't print about it. So that's the other thing, too, where I'm like, okay, so then what is the record company asking? Right. We don't even know. Right. Is it, like, break up with her? You're not allowed? Is it don't kiss her in public? Is it, like, what what is it? Well, and the way that Bernie says they won't even let me go on the road with you, the way she says it, I don't know if it's how it's written, but it makes it sound like they don't even know about her. Yeah. It was just like, well, this means that I wouldn't be able to go on the road with you. So it wasn't like a specific, you can't have Bernie. It was just kind of like, no women? I don't know. It was very strange. Yeah. Um, You're absolutely... Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I agree with you that it would have benefited for this being like a full scene and we Mm -hmm. could understand like, what is a record company asking? Like, what is her reaction to this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I agree with you though, that it does feel untethered. And then like, they strangely try to bring it back. Like what Billy says in the hospital when they're talking about how his friends were killed in action. I was like, this is the first time you're mentioning Vietnam and it's now yeah. in this capacity, in this like brief, flitty little way. It just, I. Yeah, I was it's just it. frustrating because yeah. that's the other part of like a historical, something that you set in that's like a period piece, which this is, it's like, obviously there's the sets and the costumes and things like that. But also it's like people's point of view Mm -hmm. is tethered to where they live. Like we have a certain belief system because we're born when we're born. And I think if we were born a hundred years in the past or a hundred years in the future, like we would interact with the world differently. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, anyway, we're at the SNL after party. Warren, I I just got to say, I fucking love him so much. I love the actor. I love the way he's written. Whenever he has a scene, I'm thrilled to bits about it. Warren <laughs> hits on Lisa in the worst way possible. Like this scene was cringe. Giddy, cl- clapping my hands, kicking my feet. I loved it so much. It was so cringy. It was the worst flirting I've ever seen. Give me more. Pump it in my veins. I lived for it. It, it was, was so fun. So awkward. I was <laughs> so embarrassed for him. It was... He's so dense. And it's also it's like clearly someone who just is accustomed to getting shot down. Yeah. Because even when she yeah. goes into his face and is like, I like drummers and rock bands. He's <laughs> like, that's a great joke. <laughs> I don't know. It was so cute. I just yeah. loved it. Yeah. Um, and Lisa's so hot and she's such like a perfect like version of that. Like she seems like a movie star. Yeah. I've never seen that actress before, but I'm like, yeah, you're a famous movie star. Um, I don't think she's been in anything. I didn't totally buy that she was a huge movie star, but oh, I thought so. I mean, that's great. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Um, it was like not important. So it was fine. Yeah, but they have good chemistry. It's really fun. 
Yeah. Billy and uh, Daisy are walking through. Daisy, Billy asks how it go, how it felt, and she goes, "Felt feels good, but not as good as cocaine." You know, <laughs> Daisy. It's true though. She knows her truth. She knows her truth. She doesn't lie. That is very good of her. Um, Teddy has a heart attack, which is awful. I thought he was a goner. So did I. Yeah. I don't know. Well, because I mean, this is. Do we spoil the book in that aspect? Yeah. He dies. There we are. Mm-hmm. In the book, he dies after he has his heart attack. And it changes the trajectory of everything. Like, that is the that is the catalyst for the end. Um, mm-hmm. Because Daisy was going to go to rehab, and then Teddy dies. And she's like, well, why, would it, why do I even care? So then she starts using it again. Um, so it's just yeah, it's odd. I don't I didn't I do think it w- is interesting maybe uh that the end is now going to be a little bit more relationship based and less that Daisy just falls back off the wagon. Um so like that's an interesting way that they're going to they're probably going to go so that was okay and then um i it definitely is kind of a a bad cliche and something that you you don't want to happen when a black character dies for the um like journey of the white characters you know yeah definitely i think i don't know i I don't think think this is exactly that cliche no no no. but yeah i I hear what you're saying off though if it's like okay really like we have to kill off teddy so that these you know as like a catalyst yeah, it's these rich white people can figure out their shit. Like, it, it might have been a little. I hear ya. I hear ya. That's something. Um, also, though, but... like, I do love Teddy the actor and, like, the the character. So I was okay with him not dying because that just means that he gets to be around more. Like, you know? Oh, I would have cried. I would have been so sad. Like, obviously, no. We have loved Teddy since the jump. It's He's yeah. great. He's great. The gang's at the hospital. They find out Teddy's okay. Um, Daisy and Billy are at the chapel and they talk about sobriety. Do they believe in God? Do things happen for a reason? Billy brings up Vietnam. I just like this, this, all of a sudden out of the nowhere, like, oh, I could have been like, this would have been made, this would have made sense if they had had Chuck die Mm -hmm. in Vietnam. Like, then it would have been like, oh, remember our old bandmate? This could have been something. Yeah. Just like this was the first time that we hear about Vietnam. It just felt weird. I agree. I don't like it. Um, and then, then there's absolutely no mention of Camilla. Like Billy does not bring her up at all in this conversation. Which makes sense to me. I don't know. I feel like it makes they- sense that he doesn't bring her up. Yeah. I think like in this in this episode Billy is living in this dreamland where he thinks he can have Camilla and Daisy and he can have Daisy as his like professional companion and Camilla as his like life family companion. And so it but makes Why isn't he bringing her up? Like he's to not Daisy? Talking... He's not talking about her. Because I think to Daisy, he wants to pretend that Camilla doesn't exist. I it feels leading on to me. It feels it feels like it feels like cheating. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> it's bad. It's not good. You shouldn't be that way. No, I'm not saying. Oh, this is a smart move by everybody. These are not smart people doing good things. These are dummies doing bad things i know but it just do. makes me it just makes me worried about where we're going in the finale oh, that's all that's what i, I gotcha. mean i just am like i would it would be if he was bringing her up 
it would make more sense. But the fact that he's not, I'm like really worried about the finale. <laughs> I can't wait till we, I can't wait till the next time we record it. We can fully talk about everything out in the open and it's going to be so much easier because I disagree. Well, I think in the book, it brings it up to the point where it could happen. Yeah. And Daisy's the one that take the backtrack. So I think we're still going to the same place. Oh. Um, but Rod comes in to say that Teddy woke up and then Billy goes to see him. And Billy says, I love you to Teddy. And then Teddy calls him son. And I just fucking loved it. And it was so sweet. And it was such a lovely moment. Yeah. And it was very good. It was precious. Very precious. Um, then in the waiting room, Simone comes in. Daisy tries to apologize. I liked this scene between her and Simone. Yeah. Because I've, def- I feel like it was a very real scene as far as like, I've really done something fucked up to a friend before accidentally, or just because I was in my own head about something and she was a casualty. And I remember going to her and like hat in hand, really being like, I need to apologize and ready to really like, you know, throw myself over the coals and her just be like, I don't need it. Mm. I know who you are. I know your heart. And then, and we're good. And we, let's move past this. Yeah. And I loved that. That's what Simone did for Daisy where she was like, I understand that was not you. I forgive you. I don't need you to, you know, tear yourself in two. Right. Yeah. Um, it felt, Billy, it, yeah, it felt like an authentic female friendship in that f- manner. Yeah, it was the mm-hmm. way that it would be. And I think for Simone, too, like Billy coming close to death, and he's like a father figure to her as well, I think put a lot yeah, of things Teddy. in perspective. Yeah. Oh, Teddy, who did I say? Somebody else? Billy. Oh, no, not Billy. Not Simone, Billy. I think, could take or leave Billy. <laughs> but Teddy is like a father figure to her, too. So I think it's also that thing of like, you come so close to death that she's like, yeah, I'm not going to hold on to that. My friend was a fucking idiot. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, Billy and Daisy sneak out of the hotel. We see people chasing after them. So like we're start, we're, we are getting how big they are. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Um, They go to a diner where they get recognized. Um, And then Daisy said she's already working on the second album and she has a song. And so they immediately leave. Check, please. Perfect BLT like club sandwiches, which I was like, hmm, I'd kill for one of those right now. (laughs) Looks good. (laughs) Um, Karen and Graham are finishing having sex. Karen with her bra on, relatable. And then (laughs) I love that Karen has sore tits and she's like something is wrong because every show is always vomiting right and she's like hmm this doesn't it's feel right straight from the book mm-hmm. she like feels her breasts and she's like i knew it immediately yeah yeah I like this whole s- that. yeah it's sad um daisy plays a song for billy it was Ugh. always you is the refrain, which is like, Ugh. I mean, again, like, are they subtle or not at all? They're no. She's the basically. The song is beautiful, is, though. Like, the parts that we heard, so I was obsessed with. Her voice is fantastic in this moment, but I was just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> And he's just sitting there looking up at her, and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's so good. I mean, it's so, it's so, and then he touches her knee. Yeah. The tension. Again. The tension. It was just like, I wish they had enough kiss. This would be so yeah. fun. I would be like tearing my <laughs> shirt off, like, oh my gosh. I know, but in our mind, remember they didn't kiss, and so therefore this is was amazing tension. This is amazing, yeah. yeah. Um, Karen tells Graham that she's pregnant. Graham behaves like a fucking golden retriever, dumb dummy. He, yeah. he says every wrong thing. Yeah, like oh yeah, 
every time I read in the book where he's like, we could get a new keyboardist and like you can quit the band and I just want to Graham so just punch him in the face. Like he, we could, he or we could get a new guitarist, you, you dumb fuck. Yeah. He succumbed to the curse of the number one guy in the group and he fell. Mm. Fell to his he death. Fell. He fell to his death. Yeah. I mean, I do love older Graham in this moment where he's like, well, did Karen tell you what happened? Mm-hmm. It's not my place. Mm-hmm. And then he just gets up and leaves and gets water because he's just like, it's still so fresh for him. I know. Which is the thing that Karen was always afraid of about them getting together. Karen knew not that this exactly would happen, but she knew it would come to this point. Right. You know? Yeah. Um. Then they arrive in Pittsburgh. They get off the plane. <laughs> Eddie sees Smith, his grandma. <laughs> which is so cute. Grandma! <laughs> <laughs> They see, Billy sees his mom. His mom is so sweet. And then I love that Daisy's like kind of by herself. Like everybody's like greeting family and she doesn't have family. So she's just kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then Mrs. Dunn immediately like comes over and gives her like a giant hug. And it, mm-hmm. I just liked that moment a lot. I thought that mm-hmm. was very sweet. It was. Um, Then we find out that Billy and Graham bought their mom a beautiful home a lovely home lovely yeah. they're having a welcome home party um i love uh warren introduces mrs dunn to lisa and she goes and you're dating warren yeah <laughs> everybody's surprised everyone is aghast <laughs> they're like warren was dating a movie star can you believe it i mean oh, with those vests great. i believe it come on I believe it with that personality, Listen. that mustache. Yeah. If only he had a hairy chest, then it would be all. We yeah. Needed. Yeah. It's the smooth chest, but the vest looks so good. But the smooth chest is not. He needs a little. It's like, I don't understand why all men don't just dress 1970s. You look 12 times hotter. Especially if you're unattractive, you dress 70. Now that's the vibe. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Mm hmm. Now you're ugly hot, which is the superior hot. It's the new hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the hot. It's the hottest hot pinnacle is ugly hot. True. Truth. I'm out here giving advice. We're helping men grow. We're trying to help. We're trying to get some bell bottoms and a giant fur vest. Listen, everybody wants it. Um, Eddie's still talking about punk. He's he ignores Camilla, which I think is fair, honestly. Like for the way Camilla treated him, he sh- she should get the cold shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um. Then still, Daisy, and Cam- I still I still despise this though. Oh no, it's awful. It's dumb. It's stupid. I hate it. Yeah. Um. Daisy and Camilla talk, and it's such a sweet, loving moment. And did you see on social media, I think on Instagram, Taylor Jenkins Reid released the the what her finale to the book was going to be. Her last was going to be two emails. Did you read this? No. (gasps) Okay. I don't want to ruin it for you. Oh, my gosh. No. Ruin. You have to look it up. I'll look it up. Should we do it? We'll talk about it in the next episode. What? Yeah. What is it on? What did she release it on? Like instagram her instagram okay is it a story or a post it's a post (laughs) listen well okay if we're gonna do this much we should read them do you see them yeah all right you read the first one and i'll read the second one well no let's do it let's do it next episode let's do it during the finale all right um Anyway, but this sets that up better. Stop looking at your phone. I am. I'm putting it down. I'm putting it down. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's again Daisy being like really close to Julia. Julia loves Daisy, and I love that Camilla's like, "Oh, da- Julia loves you so much." And it's not in a like sneering way. She's like, right. "You know, isn't it great? Like, isn't she a great kid? Like, it feels really lovely." Yeah. And Daisy says that. She never wanted children because she was an accident to an inconvenience, to an afterthought, to competition. And that broke my heart. Yeah, that was brutal. 
Yeah. It, it was hard because you just. It's it's true. There are people right. like that is that is how people are and feel about themselves and how they are treated mm-hmm. by their parents. And it's so sad. Yeah, it's awful. Um, But Camilla tells Daisy. You're all kinds of things you don't even know yet. And I like that Camilla isn't like, you should have children because you'll love it or you'll be a good mom. But she's mm-hmm. just like, don't count anything out for yourself. Mm-hmm. Just keep yourself open. Yeah. In a way that I thought was really lovely and really true to Camilla's personality. Yeah. The only, I love it. It's from the book. The only thing that worries me is it's from like the last thing in the book. And so mm. just the fact that it's been moved up, it felt, it felt very natural to put it here. Um, Mm -hmm. But I'm just wondering why we didn't have this conversation later in the finale. We'll find out. When it's supposed to be happening. (laughs) I know. But it felt felt very organic. Like they're, you know, with Julia, they're talking about kids. And so it made sense. Yeah. Um, They talked to Dr. Loving and... (laughs) He realizes he's made a mistake. I loved the moment where he's like, oh, well, you know, after taxes, split six ways. How much money could you guys be making? As they're standing in this, like, gorgeous, massive house that they bought for someone else. Yeah. And the band is, like, too nice to be like, oh, a shit ton of money, dude. Like, you don't know. Like, we're rock stars. I, and he realizes he made a mistake. I still wish he was dead in Vietnam. But if not, this is a cute scene. Yeah. Um, and then we have another really beautiful scene with Camilla and Karen where Karen basically walks out of the house. She says, oh, like, whatever, nothing's wrong. And then it's all just through it's their eyes. just looks. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was oh. so good. Just, you don't need words. I love that the writers realize that you don't need anything. You don't need verbal cues to communicate this. I just thought, I thought it was great. And I just love that. And this is true to the book, too. Like, Camilla immediately knows this is devastating for Karen. Mm -hmm. And for one moment, isn't like, oh, this is a good thing. Or reconsider it. Or I love my children. You'll love your child. Like, no. She knows this is not for you. You don't want this. This This is bad news. Yeah. And I thought that that was so loving and so true to their relationship as such close friends. So, Mm -hmm. Um, then... Billy and Camilla in bed and Camilla asks if Billy wants another child. At this stage in the book, they have a second child. Yeah. No, they have three because they have twins. Wow. Oh, yeah. They've got Julia and then two other girls. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very sweet moment. Billy's into having more kids. Yeah. <clears throat> So it's good. Then we're at the Pittsburgh show. Camilla's in the audience. Dr. Loving's in the audience. Mrs. Dunn is in the audience. Billy and Daisy are acting inappropriately on stage. Daisy keeps leaning on Billy. But, you know, it's all for show. Yeah. It's all for show. Yeah, it's <laughs> like uh, Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper at the Oscars. Like, totally exactly. fake. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that to be true. Yeah. Um, um yeah i loved the band at the top of the stage together taking a bow it was just a gorgeous shot and i just i just loved being able to see that moment of them all together of course billy fucks it up um they go backstage while they await the encore and billy takes eddie's bass i uh so this is in the book, but it's during their SNL performance. Yeah. Um, and like Billy get, or Eddie gets mad about it. It's not, you know, it's not a good thing, but he kind of like gets over it because it's just one of many things. The way that they are making this, the way that they hold the camera on Billy's face, the Billy's act, or sorry, Eddie, the way they look at Eddie, Eddie's acting, the like the rage that is clearly building up inside of him and this is the this is the breaking moment makes me so worried about the finale. <laughs> <laughs> so worried. 
this was the moment where I was like, oh my gosh. Like, does Eddie tell Billy about Camilla because because Billy stole his solo? Like, is this where we're heading? I think it is. At I this stage, too, Eddie's based gonna... on the TV show, it's like, I want that for Eddie. I want him to blow up Billy. You know? Yeah. I mean, he has to. But what? Like, he's going to throw yeah. Camilla and Billy relationship into the fire because Billy stole his solo I mean I think this is a culmination of things like it's never it's never the last thing that happens right it's everything it's that builds up to it but like oh my gosh if this is yeah I was just... I was like <laughs> I have a friend who was dating this guy for years like through college and then they were like basically living together in New York and there was a t- so many like little things that happened throughout the relationship where she felt disrespected or she felt like he wasn't putting her first or, you know, all of these issues. And then one day she came home from work and she had half a sandwich in the fridge that she had been thinking about all day, <laughs> you know? And so she comes home and he didn't work and he was playing video games or dicking around and she opens the fridge and the sandwich is gone. Yep. And she's like, where's my fucking sandwich? And he's like, oh, I ate it. Did you want it? And now there's nothing in the fridge. She's starving. And she's like, we're breaking up. So I always call this like the sandwich incident, like the breakup sandwich. Because no, she did not break up with him over a sandwich. She broke up with him for everything and then the sandwich. So that is (laughs) a fantastic story. So if Eddie does it, it's not going to be that Billy stole his solo. It's going to be everything and Billy stole the solo. Right. You know? Right, right, right. But still, the fact that that's where it's headed, I'm just... (laughs) Yeah. When they zoom in on him fuming on the plane, I was like, Eddie, keep it together. (laughs) Be cool, man. Be cool. Be cool. cool. I mean, we're headed to Chicago. But before that, Eddie says he feels like a second class citizen and um, at a first class resort. What I like, too, in the show is they show this is Eddie's disposition. Eddie is somebody who would feel slighted no matter what. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is where he lives within his own psyche. And it's he just shouldn't be in a band. Right. This is not the life for him. Right. Um. So over two against three, which is a gorgeous song. Teddy is just trying to like live post heart attack. Um, Billy in the future says sometimes the right thing to do. And the, there's a difference between the right thing to do and the right thing to do for yourself. Which I thought was really profound and interesting and is the question of all the characters in this moment in a way. Yeah. Um, Karen has her abortion. Camilla takes her. It's lovely. Um, Simone leaves Bernie. We have more questions than answers about that. I mean, it's a bummer. I don't want to see them not be together, but also I'm like, I do wish we had had like one full scene with them because like what's happening? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, then Daisy and Billy are on, I guess, his mother's porch. They're in a big house. Yeah, they're still at his mother's house. They are doing the crossword yeah. so close to each other. Like, they oh. are talking. If they're talking, they're on top of each other. They're looking into each other's irises. Also, the crossword um, puzzle clue was to and two? fro. <laughs> this is some Monday crossword bullshit. This is easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> was, that was pretty bad but they were so close to each other i was like good grief you guys like back up what is going on well you know when you have a crush on somebody and you're like i want to just crawl inside them in a subtle way where maybe they won't notice and it, <laughs> it was so true um <laughs> then daisy says we should be together which was a the quiet part out loud <sighs> yep this scene is rough it's is a, a fantastic seed and well done but rough to watch like oof yeah i just wanted him i just wanted billy to say she is my wife and i love her like he was yeah. just saying she's my wife i'm never going to leave her which he says in the book but in the book he also is like i love her i chose her like i'm with her you He's know? so much more definitive yeah yeah and i just wanted a little bit more of an emotional 
tie to Camilla in that moment mm-hmm. where like, sure, you can say you're not going to leave your wife and you can say also, yeah, we should be together because it is true. They should be together. But also, you know, defend your actions and defend the fact that you love your wife and like you you didn't just pick her because, you know, she, she you met her first and you met her before Daisy. You also picked her because you love her. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I just wanted him to say that. I thought it was, yeah, it was like, again, going off our retroactive history, the fact that they haven't mm-hmm. kissed. It was a great scene. I did love Daisy mm-hmm. just like blurting out, like, we should be together. I was like, oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but I just wanted him to be a bit more explicit of saying, yes, but I love my wife. Yeah. But it was juicy. i mean it was it was amazing and billy's sort of saying like this is our life together like we'll perform together we'll have this tension for 20 years and we'll have a ton of albums where i'm like this tension is gonna last 20 years years? one of you will kill the other one you guys kiss Um, each other after like two days yeah this is all we're supposed to be um yeah, isn't this enough? They're like touching heads. He's cradling her face in his hands. Danger. 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 Uh, and then Camilla. <laughs> Camilla walks by. Um, we find out the next scene that she has seen them through the window. How did you feel about this? I liked it. I thought it was good. I mean, I didn't like it. I hated it for everybody, but like for the for like the story, I thought it was good i I think think for the show it had to happen but i didn't like it well i think also for camilla it's like she has set down her boundary which is if you ever love her it's over right and so i think for camilla too there's a level of them flirting or spending time together that she has decided to be okay with But I think also like her being confronted with it visually in this way, it's like you can say that you're okay with something, but then it happening or you seeing it does Mm. change how okay you thought you were with it. You know? Yeah. I thought it was, it was neat. It was, I was needful. I thought it was something that was needed. Yeah. It just, I mean, I hate to be a broken record, but it really made me worry for the finale. (laughs) Oh my the god! I'm gonna, get you, she- I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make you a fucking T-shirt that says "Worried for the Finale." <laughs> I love it. I would wear that so. That's uh, so good. Um, I just like. Uh, it just made me think about where Camilla Camilla's headspace is in going into episode ten. I'm concerned. I'm not. I'm less concerned than I was. I, I, now I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to go the way that the book does. Okay. I think so. I think we're getting there. Um, I don't so think now we the are. Lead, I right, think we're well, going the other way. Here's the thing. We're going to be finding out and like, maybe we just text each other only in emojis or something yeah. so that we do save it for the pod, but I will need to communicate with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. So just emojis. Just, okay. Um, they're leaving for Chicago. We know Chicago is where the band ends up breaking up. So tensions are high. Eddie's pissed. Just grumpy, which is also his natural state. So nobody is <clears throat> really acknowledging him, which I do appreciate. Warren ha- is on cloud nine. He's with Lisa. Why did He's going to marry that woman. With him. He, dro- he dropped her in Pittsburgh? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she had to fly somewhere else or something. I don't know. Um. Does Graham, Graham ultimately finds out about the abortion, but in this moment, it seems like he doesn't know about it. He has it. no idea. Yeah. Um, Billy and Julia, I just love, like, you can tell that Sam Claffin has children. Like, yes! I think you can always tell yes! when actors have children with, by the way they interact with kids. And he's so natural with Julia that I'm like, oh, this is a man who has children who has, like, played with kids before and tried to keep them entertained like i don't know it's like the way he sits with her the way he speaks to her i'm like daddy i thought the exact same thing i was like yep he's got kids in real life yeah he yeah yeah you could always tell and it's and not that camilla isn't good with the kids but like you could also tell she doesn't have kids, which right. is fine. Yeah. Obviously. She's acting. She's she's putting it out there. But it's like yeah. 
there's a way in which like you hold kids if you've been holding kids for a long time where it does also feel like they're just like an afterthought like a sack of potatoes like you're not as precious you're like it's fine I not that he's in this moment holding her like that right like they're sitting together on the plane like playing a game that they're making up but I think that Danilo has done a really him. good job, actually. I like the way that she kind of like throws Julia around and like holds her. Mm-hmm. I have thought that, like, yeah, I know she doesn't have kids, but I thought that she, I think she's done a good job of oh, acting she's like a mother. Done a good job. Yeah. yeah, but I think there's like a subtle, it's like just yeah, hard yeah. to explain, but there's like a subtle little tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. Uh, but no, 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 she's been fantastic. Um, Camilla, this is when we find out that Camilla saw Billy and Daisy. She's pissed. She's looking out the window. Billy says, I love you. I And this is something that, like, Pat does, too. Like, I'll be pissed at him about something. Not about him, like, making out with his bandmate, but, like, <laughs> something else. Like, not, I don't know. Whatever. Um, oh, you mean, like, that not- one time that you found Pat and Clayton holding each other's heads? together i wouldn't even be surprised i'd be like i get the apartment (laughs) no yeah i mean it would be yeah that's my my husband's yeah he would leave me for clayton um but then anyway you're mad about something whatever it is yeah and then he just goes i love you and you're like okay i love you too but in this moment let me be mad yeah it annoys me yeah um but they end up holding hands. Daisy sees them holding hands. Billy looks back at Daisy. Ooh, Billy looks back. He looked mm-hmm. back like pointedly. We get a moment with each of the women. No woman is happy on this plane. Every no. woman is in a hell of her own mind. Every- or every woman knows what is the best thing for her and what they need to do, but doesn't want to do it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And we're on our way to Chicago. And the finale. And which the finale. I'm worried about. Okay, God. <laughs> I had to say it one more time. Now I really do want a t-shirt like that. That says I'm worried about the finale. Worried it would be such finale? an inside joke for the tens and tens of people who have listened to this show. But I think <laughs> that it would also like translate past just this show because so many is a fandom shirt, you know? Like fans just yeah. constantly worried about the finale. And then when we get to the succession finale, we write not on it, not worried about the finale because I trust I trust Jesse Armstrong with my life. What? Oh, hundred. We we watched the last se- the season three finale. Renaissance art, art, art. Put it, I know. Put it in a museum. Oh, I was I looking mean... at <gasps> images of the last episode to like remind myself before today, and I just like every single image is. Kendall, Shiv, and uh, uh, Roman, Roman sitting, and it's just. I remember when that first happened, and I watched it live. I my mouth dropped, and I just screamed art, and it was like this is a Renaissance painting. Like, mm-hmm. it's one of the most indelible images ever put to screen. Like, it's oh, uh, it's magic. That's amazing. That's I gonna mean, be my swoon, or the scene where. Shiv, because the thing I, I, when I first started watching Succession, and we'll both swoon about Succession, and this is Succession Corner, give us three minutes. <laughs> but Succession, the thing about Succession is I hated it when I first started watching it. I was like, this really? is a dumb show. I don't like it. Because I thought that we were supposed to think that the kids were smart. And I was like, these kids are idiots and I don't want them to succeed. And then once I was like, oh, no, no, they're all stupid. They're all mm. dum-dums. And we don't want them to succeed. That I was like, I this show is the greatest thing of all time. Like, I yeah. absolutely live and die by this show. I was wrong. Um, and Shiv in particular, like, that she thinks of herself as this, like, boss bitch, like, great negotiator. She's so <laughs> bad at negotiating. She's so bad at every aspect of business. And when... Logan finally snaps at her and imitates her to her face. I remember mm. being like, no. Like the cruelty of that was so profound that I was just like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was for the scene, it was perfect. It was yeah. it was so heartbreaking to watch, like, oh God, like he's destroying her. And he knows exactly how to destroy her. 
Oh yeah. He's, mm. he's 12 steps ahead of all those. I don't want any of those kids getting the, the anything. I'm like, this succession is such a great, like propaganda for why no one should inherit anything because like yes. these kids are stupid and give it to Jerry or give it to the two dumb white guys that always show up to everything and just bumble around with Laird <laughs> or no Laird's gone, but like whatever, whoever they are. Um, Frank. <laughs> Frank and the other one it's yeah. like they've earned it more than any of these kids and so I it think... is so funny to watch a show and just be like oh I don't want anyone to succeed yeah yeah I know oh my gosh so excited I think if and if it could be anybody I would want to give it to Jerry but if it has to be a no kid, Jerry has earned it yeah yeah, she's earned it but if have if it has to be a family member I hope that they give it to Greg <laughs> give it to cousin Greg he has come from the farthest down and he has yeah. risen to the top by attaching himself to Tom, who I also would be okay with getting the, it A all. love story of a generation. I freaking love it. You can't crack, you can't make a Tom without cracking a few cracks. Or when they, when he's asking Greg to go along with him and Greg yeah. goes, who needs a soul anyway? <laughs> I wanted them to, ki- I started chanting kiss last night when we rewatched the episode. I was like, kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> I loved it so much. I mean, I if it ends up being Tom and Greg at the end, I will be thrilled. I will be so happy. I just, I could see every single person getting it. And I just, I'm so excited to see what they do. Yeah. Okay, it's been three minutes. Our succession corner's over. This swooning on succession. Oh, I'm I know, so we're both swooning on the finale. I'm so excited for tonight. Pat is like, I'm going to come home at this time. We'll eat dinner at this time so that we'll be ready and the kitchen will be clean by the time nine o'clock comes and then we'll be able to watch Succession. And I'm like, oh Oh." my gosh. I love it. I love it so much. Um, He'll be the one cleaning the kitchen as well. I want to make sure everybody knows he, I don't clean kitchens. Um, So meticulous. All right. One more. One more episode. One more. We're worried. Well, one of us is worried about the finale. One's feeling okay. Which one is which? Um, Who's who? <laughs> uh, so you can follow Taylor at tholt18 on Instagram. You can email us at learningthetropespodcast at gmail.com. We are on Instagram and Twitter at learningthetropes. You can find us on Patreon, patreon.com, and search learning the tropes all of the episodes are videoed you can watch a video of us talking through all these episodes if you want to see a lot of hand movements and us trying to say each other things to each other through our eyes um and some dancing and some dancing taylor's dancing and until next time keep jonesing <laughs>